Good afternoon. This is Talking Trade Live with On The Tools. My name's Andy and I'm going to be your host for the next half hour or so. Uh, apologies for the slightly frantic look. Uh, I'm driving around London where we're working, trying to find an area with reception. And I'm currently sat in a bus lane, so hopefully this will all work. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, the last few shows, those regular viewers will know we've uh, discussed apprenticeships, um, price rise increases, what COVID's doing to construction. Uh, and this week, we're going to be talking about material price rises and shortage of materials. That's the main thing. There is a huge shortage of certain materials, uh, mainly plastering products, pl uh, finish, bonding, hard wool, dot and dab, that sort of thing. However, there is now evidence that there's more stuff in um, a lot of demand, which isn't out there, which is producing longer lead times, delays on jobs, etc. My special guests this week are Steve and Alex. Uh, they're both bricklayers, so right on the cold face. Welcome along. Thank you for Hi. joining us. Um, firstly, uh, what are the main things you guys are struggling to get material wise? Obviously, there's the whole plaster issue, but are you struggling with, with any materials in your line of work? Uh, the main thing we ran out of was building sand, which obviously is quite important. And where are you guys based in the country? We're in Lancashire. So soft sand, building sand, is now a shortage up there. What about the other aggregates, sharpened, plastering sand, ballast? Um, it was all pretty low, wasn't it? Yeah, almost all the sand was gone. Like in the air, uh, when we pulled up, there was just nothing. Bays. Yeah. They were just waiting on deliveries. And is that um, just your supplier or is that mainly across sort of all the suppliers up there, the nationals to the regional merchants and everyone? Not sure about the main ones. I know um, Tucson's wasn't even open last week. So um, we've only been local ones, haven't we? Yeah. And um, a couple, uh, another one that we use, they, um, they're only appointment only. So you can't just turn up and when you need some gear, you've got to ring up and make an appointment and be given a time slot to turn up. And then... We did turn up for a particular coping, I think it was, when we got there, they, they didn't have any, even though they booked us in for an appointment to pick some up. So let's get this right. Now, because of coronavirus, et cetera, we're having to make appointments to go and pick up materials. Yeah. Yeah. You've got yeah. a shortage of soft sand, so that is now having knock-on effects to other trades coming in, once you've done brickwork, block work, groundwork, that sort of thing. So yeah. how are you finding it with other trades? Are they getting frustrated, or are they literally having to come in and, you know, go straight home again. Um, the last few weeks, we've only done our own small jobs, so we haven't had any other trades like garden walls, bits of fencing and pointing jobs, so we haven't really had much to do with other, obviously, because we haven't seen anything of anybody. Um, I think on site yesterday, they were struggling to get um, 100 mil solid blocks. They turned up eventually, but they were due the day before, so they, that, that was a... A delay in those was full full load they eventually arrived just the afternoon isn't it yeah yeah so what we're saying this is now having a bigger impact than we thought because here sort of in london we've got a well everyone's got it the plaster problem um i went and um i managed to order 16 bags um this was i had a delivery yesterday um eight were on the lorry reason being someone went into the yard of a national merchant and Nick Tate. Um, and this is no word of a lie. In Staines, which is sort of southwest London here, um, a mate, um, the customer said, the only finish I can find, and wait for this, she paid £100 a bag. And that was yesterday morning, straight fresh from a mate who's a delivery driver for one of the nationals. He said, I've just come from a job. The customer has paid £100 a bag of finish. Now, as we all know, six seven quid plus the vodka and tonic um it's not that expensive generally um how do you see this going though? i mean what's what's going to happen if we've got this shortage none of us can afford to take it out of our profit margins what are you yeah. guys going to do if with this delay if you do get offered soft sand for more money are you going to try and pass it on to the customer or just try and bite the bullet and see it out i suppose it depends how what the prices have actually gone up already actually because our, our local merchant, it's like it's like back in the 80s, they don't even have computers in the shop. Everything's handwritten still. Yeah. Nothing's done on, the, on, on logged in or anything like that. So you, you don't even get um, an itemised receipt. You just get the receipt, still receipt. So you have to go through, well, that must be that, and that must be that. And last time I looked at my receipt, I didn't recognise anything because all the numbers had changed. 
Yeah. So I couldn't work out what was what. So it's it's like it's not it's got quite a bit. It's such a waste well, of cement. Well, interestingly, um, Sadie Atherton, she's in Lancashire, multi finish, hard to try and get hold of. Uh, people are selling it for obscene amounts. Sadie, you're one of many that's saying the same thing. Alec Stan, um, people selling it. He's referred to as scum, and I totally agree because perfect timing. Perfect timing. <laughs> we have the Plaster Sisters, Kate and Ella, uh, who are spreads. And we've been talking. Hello, perfect timing. Have um, you got any finish going, Spare? Yeah, we <laughs> no, we haven't. <laughs> it's all ours. <laughs> yeah, we had to fight hard to get that. Yeah. <laughs> so, how are you both? I obviously haven't spoken to you for a little bit, but it's lovely to see you. And you have struck the lottery, haven't you? You've got some finish at last. Yeah. yeah it's taken did. time, though, to get it, hasn't TikTok it? And a lot of early mornings mm. and tip offs and all sorts of. Dodgy dealings. Yeah, it's mad. Well, I was going to say, let me ask you both, how did you get your hands on it? Was it just rocking up as a merchant's open queuing? Did you hear of a delivery following delivery drivers in the lorries because you knew you've got bags on the bag? How did you get it? I kind of did, actually. <laughs> I, I did follow a British gypsum lorry into Ashford, knowing that they were delivering that day for the next day. So, yeah, it was kind of. Yeah, and then I got up. <laughs> the next day early very early to go because the queues are ridiculous um but they didn't they didn't put it on the website because previously they'd had such a rush of people coming in they said it was ridiculous so they didn't advertise the fact it came in so there was actually no one there so I managed to get five bags and my husband got five and then I had a couple of friends also come along and get five each as well so well, from what I'm, I was just saying to um, Steve and Alex, who are bricklayers, um, as you can see, I was just saying to them in Staines, southwest London, um, I had a big drop yesterday. Um, I was due 16 bags. I only had eight because eight were nicked out the yard the night before. Um, but in Staines, the delivery driver who I've known for a decade, he's a good friend. Uh, the lady over there, wait for it, and you're both sitting down. She paid £100 a bag of finish because she had to get the job done. Oh, now, she, she obviously had the money, but let's be fair, most customers and certainly us trades, we haven't got it. I can't lose that sort of money. Um, no. Kate and Ella, where is this heading? Is this going to be black market stuff? I mean, I had another job, well, not my job, <laughs> but mine. He had bags of finish nicked off the scaffolding in the middle of the night. I mean, where yeah. are we heading with this? We've well, heard that quite a lot, actually, yeah. bags being nicked from places. Um, we've, had, we've had to pay... Um, I don't know, it was about £15 a bag in the last few weeks as well when we couldn't get it straight from the merchants. Um, but, yeah, I mean, all we can hope for is that it starts coming in properly um, and we get a good flow coming in, coming through. And people stop. And, well, I mean, we've heard through the grapevine that just your general public are going out, stockpiling the multi when it comes in, and then they're also selling it off for profit. So mm -hmm. you kind of just think, I don't know, maybe the trades need to have priority, priority maybe. first and... Well, Kate and Ellis, you remember from last time we had a chat um, on air, which was radio then, um, you tend to answer my questions before I ask them because my next <laughs> question was, as tradespeople that need the stuff because it's our job, should we have priority over Joe Public? As you say, they're going in, loading up um, and selling it on a massive increase, which is affecting all of us. Mm. Do you think trades mm. should have priority in situations where materials are sparse? It's a difficult question. It's a difficult one, isn't it? I mean, I do in so much that, you know, it's our job. It's our livelihood at the mm. end of the day. You know, if we have no multi, then what are we to do? It's... Yeah. But equally, we'd be happy if we turned up to a job and a customer had managed to get multi exactly, yeah. and we can then get on and do it as well. You obviously got to check the sell by dates so that you get it in from, you know, <laughs> yeah. six months out yeah. of date. <laughs> but, um, to um, Steve and Alex, um, obviously... Uh, up north where you guys are, if if um, suddenly your your soft sand does get a lot worse in terms of supply, um, do you believe that us trade should have a sort of beneficial treatment over Joe Public that wants a couple of small bags to do a bit of walling in his garden? Yeah, I suppose <laughs> it would depend on like what stage of the house you're on. Like um, if with us doing the foundations, that's us starting the work, isn't it? But if it, if it's doing like um, if it's doing someone else's wall or an extension, it's it's that's already a finished house, isn't it? So mm. it's like 
because build- we just use the building sound for the foundations. The rest of it's all silent mix, isn't it? Yeah. So like, um, it's a tough one that because beneficial for both sides. Yeah. Well, comments coming in are very much trades should have priority. Dom Sanderson, yes, we should have priority. Alex Stan, yes, trades should get priority. Um, Sue Snowden was Blacklock. That's a brilliant name. I'd love to see your passport. Uh, yes, the trade should get priority over Joe Bloggs. So, Kay and Ella, I was just talking to Steve and um, Alex, who are up north. They, they've got a shortage on soft sand. So, by the sounds of things, we know Finnish, Bondin, Hardwall, Dot and Dab is on a massive shortage. Oh. Uh, British Gyps and I've heard a, a, a churning out more, but you know, where, where is it? Because it's all on pre-order. You turn up at, you know, half eight, it's already gone. Um, yeah. We, I'm also seeing landscaping products and if sand and cement are getting short, uh, you know, this is going to turn us into a pretty difficult situation. And oh, yeah. I mean, what, what would you give any advice after finding finish? What's the best things you would say? Because, you know, we've got, you know, Tracy Jagger saying we should have priority, Lee Hewitt, Jamie McDonald. I mean, there's there's a lot of um, people saying we should have priority. But you, your advice to people looking to finish, do what you did, follow the lines in to the... Well, so, I, to be honest, at the time, we felt like headless chickens. Just any lead that we got, we followed. Um, there's a lot of chat online um, and you know there are some lovely people out there who will you know if they know something they'll pass that on to you and they're not going to try and sell you bags for silly money um, it's it's honestly it's about talking to other tradespeople and finding out what they're doing and how they're getting it and if they know anything and just talking really talking isn't it talking to the stores as well like yeah. the regular customers like we've got quite a good rapport with obviously like our regular stores so you know, just handing our number over and they say they'll give us a call when it comes in as well. So I think the big thing for all of us, doesn't matter what trade we're material wise, if we're getting it offered for obscene amounts of money is just say, even if we got it, just say no, because it's encouraging people to yeah. stockpile. And then, oh, yeah. you know, your profit margin's gone. You're basically working for tuppence. Um, yeah. just so, Kate and Ella, I've just had a really interesting comment. Oh, we're flying through. Dave Dickens, car lights, finished, 12 pounds a bag better than multi and no shortage now i believe car light is coming in from ireland it's a That's white true, yeah. what's your view on it is it any good because uh he Dave, we haven't is, used it. yeah we've seen quite a good re- uh, quite a lot of good reviews on it um we've not actually had to use it yet because we've been lucky enough to to get multi so obviously we had to stop for quite a few months um mm. with the whole coronavirus so we've only recently come back but yeah as i say lucky We've been lucky enough to ju- just use the multi at the moment. Yeah, that's well, not Luke, to say we wouldn't try it. No, definitely not. No. Luke Payne, uh, huge issues getting paint for exterior and special finishes. This goes back to people on lockdown doing DIY. So paint, uh, fence panels, I heard there's a three-week wait for most people. And then landscaping, your Indian sandstone, that's a month. So lockdown has not only affected trays, but people doing their own work is now causing a, a shortage of materials steve and alex uh without any soft sand you guys can't work no no <laughs> no not so this is impacting you which is impacting family which is is having a massive knock-on effect well yeah um they did get some in eventually but it, it tends to dissipate quite quickly it wasn't just sand it was like coping stones uh, just to finish the wall off um and he told us that it was loads of stuff loads of stuff he was running out of he just couldn't get it in and um, going back to the plaster, the day they opened, he said there's like 30 vans in a queue. So they prioritised their regulars because they had all the other plasters coming in from other other um, merchants coming for yeah. plaster. They said, well, we've got to give it to our regulars first. So well, my national supply, where, near where I live, um, they had exactly that, what you, both you guys have said. They had so many vans queuing down the road. Um, the council basically said, you've got to stop this. Um, it was causing a blockage of the of the road, um, and yeah. you know, apologies, I can't keep up with um, the comments because this is clearly a hot topic. A lot of people are getting pretty pissed off, as we all are. Um, yeah, yeah. Stephen Rowlands, yes, massive shout, um, and this has got to be told to everybody: stop people bulk buying, and that's the problem. Uh, a few years ago, bricks and blocks were in a shortage because big developers were stockpiling in the southwest in fields. 
Uh, this is now a problem with Finnish Bond in Hardwall, Dot and Dab. And as we're hearing landscaping from your soft sand all the way through to Indian sandstone, um, whose responsibility would you say this is? Starting Kate and Ella, is this government that have not looked ahead? Because they chucked us construction workers straight back in ahead of anyone else. And they've yeah. not even considered that, well, hang on, British Gypsum shut down that have at the moment got a monopoly. Um, are they to blame? Are we looking at merchants not forward planning or are there federations that need to represent its members better? Um, I, I don't think it was well thought through from the start when the government, you know, sort of stopped uh, people making the materials but still wanted people to use the materials. So I, I would say it goes straight back up to the top, to be perfectly honest. If British Gypsum couldn't produce... There's nothing, and their hands are tied, there's nothing that they can do about it. It means merchants can't get hold of it to sell it on to us to be able to do the work. Steve and Alex, have you, where would you sort of push the responsibility for this? Because at the end of the day, someone's got to take blame. and It's not us trades. Um, it's a strange one, really, because it, it's little things like uh, my grinder broke the other day, so I took it to the pipe place to get it fixed. And we also had a nail gun in there. And the, nails, the nail gun's been there about three weeks now, hasn't it? Probably, yeah. And it's never coming back for it anytime soon because the repairman's on furlough. And apparently he's, he's had um, two Hitachi breakers to fix. No, they sent them away to Hitachi to be fixed. They were fixed during furlough. But because the fellow who fixed it is back on, he's on furlough now, they can't get them back to give back to the customer. So some people are back, some people aren't. So it's, it's affecting everybody in different ways and like down the chain kind of thing. Well, I think the worrying thing is, guys, is that it's not just material shortages. It's people doing essential work, such as repairing tools. Without yeah. materials and tools, we're pretty useless. You know, we might yep. and the rain and sell the big issue or something. Uh, mm -hmm. My name's Andy. This is Talking Trades Live with On The Tools. Uh, we've got Kate and Ella, who most of you know are the Plastered Sisters, and also Steve and Alex Bricklayers uh, join us. We are discussing material shortages. We all know uh, plastering products are... Uh, run out. I mean, crikey, if there's a lorry coming, they're going to be hijacked soon at this rate. Um, we're also talking about um, soft sand being uh, in short supply uh, in the north of England, um, landscaping products, fencing, which a lot of people are doing themselves on lockdown. Um, just trying to answer a few comments. Uh, right, Garen Cloak, uh, he says British Gypsum are running at 60% capacity. He's been bulk liquid tipping there for plasterboard. Uh, Garen, I'd love to hear some more information on that. Um, I, my sources have said they claim they're running at 80%, but 60%, so really you're turning out half of what you should be. So, Garen, thank you for letting us know. Please um, get in touch with any more information. Um, Alex stands back on. Uh, trade suppliers should be getting the deliveries before, I like this, before DIY stores. Then the suppliers should start with the spreads, the builders, homeowners. I'm agreement with him. Alex, Stan, would you go with that? I'm I'm with him. Alec, you should be running for PM, mate. <laughs> Builders in first, um, DIYs in second. You know, this is our job, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's not just affecting us, it's affecting the customers as well. That's it. DIYs are just affecting them. It's, it's like two, twice the people are being affected, isn't it? Well, Luke Hodge is saying there's um, there's cuts and there's shortages, sorry, in Australia. So this isn't just um, us here. Um, I know for a fact Ireland, bizarrely, have got most things um, in stock. Um, obviously, a smaller country and smaller economy than us. Um, so we're talking about shortages of materials. Let's let's sort of go forward a bit with this. If suddenly the demand stays where it is, the supply stays where it is. Oh, Kate and Ella, are you okay? Sorry. <laughs> I was worried you were driving. You just Take a tumble. <laughs> no, we're not driving. Um, yeah, <laughs> we, we're trying to look forward. If, if materials do stop, which they're going to, um, I don't think the government realise how serious this is. We're, we, we are responsible to 10% of the economy in this country. There's 2.7 million workers across all sectors in construction, 1.2 million trades. This could get pretty serious. This is going to end up, construction could grind to a halt. Kate, Ella, would you agree? Yeah, I, I, I would say that's a, a fair thing to say. Um, I mean, when, it's not fair that we're spending, you know, half our time trying to chase plaster and then the other half actually working with it. 
Um, you know, we should be able to do a full week's work at the moment because that's what the government has said that we should be doing. Uh, but we're not able to and we're not able to keep our uh, well, we're not able to fulfill what our customers need from us. And, um, you know, we worry about our reputation from it. Um, most customers are obviously understanding, but, you know, you ringing a customer up and letting them down constantly. It's just not fair on them or us. And some people no. also we found don't understand quite how difficult it is to get finished because we've had someone say oh well maybe if you ring the stores they might be able yeah, to help and or, oh, well shall I try another plaster as well you can try um, it's, well it's, yet again Kate and Ella you've 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 prompted a comment um Cy James has said exactly what you guys have just said it's who you know unfortunately he's a spread couldn't get any plaster the client picked up 25 bags and make after making one phone call yeah I mean, it, it's, it's, it's almost like the, the public is probably seeming to get preferential treatment over tradespeople that, that need the materials. It's, um, it's bizarre. Lee Hewitt's got in touch. He is now supporting the fact that the fencing is in shortage. He said he's got orders and materials three weeks in advance from his fence supplier. Um, Euro panels being the hardest to get. When the customer changes their mind, as they do on every job... Um, <laughs> They have to drive around four supplies to get the bits he needed to end up, and he ends up doing a 14-hour day. So little things, customers changing their mind, shortage of materials, us trays running around trying to pick up materials. We're going to grind to a halt. Steve and Alex, what's your view? What should government be doing? Because in my eyes, pull your finger out and get this sorted. Well, we need to get, everyone, all, the, we need to get all the supplies back to work for starters because we're running out now. And not all the sites are back to work yet. What happens when everybody goes back to work? Yeah, exactly. Full, full capacity yet, and we're running out of stuff now. Well, Neil Willie in the Midlands, so we are covering the whole country with comments. Thanks for sending them in, and please, please keep them going. Landscape materials are non-existent in the West Midlands. Wooden products especially. Customers don't seem to understand that. This is what it goes back to saying. You've got to make that phone call to the customer saying, I can't get any fence panels or soft sand or... I tell you, I, I don't see this with all, this is great that obviously on the tool, we've got this fantastic reach with so many people across the country. By the looks of it, we'll be lucky to be working at Christmas. Um, it's <laughs> Daryl Chapman. He reckons, yep, I agree. Pull your finger out and get things going. Um, my little view on this, you look at the housing minister. I did a bit of research on him because I want to get him on this show, but at the moment he's running scared. His background, he was educated at Cambridge studying history. I've got to ask, what does he know about laying bricks or putting a hit on the wall? No. <laughs> Kate and Ella, to start with, do you think us trades should be spoken to more? More people such as yourself that have got a large following, that obviously are trades people, do they need, the government needs to speak to people, if you like, boots on the ground rather than a suit that studied history at Cambridge? Absolutely. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Couldn't agree with that more. Um, yeah, it's just... I have to say, I don't think the government quite understood what they were doing with construction in the first place because they literally said, you can go back to work straight away, um, with no direction, no SOPs, absolutely nothing. Yeah. Um, but you're not having key worker status either. So, you know, those with kids couldn't even get back yeah. to work, despite the fact we could still get materials at that, at that stage. Um, we couldn't actually get to work because we had kids as well. So the whole thing was just ridiculous uh, from our point of view anyway. Well, I still think that, I mean, to me, um, the likes of you guys, all four of you on here, plus all the people getting in touch is let's speak to people on the ground. We're the ones in the cold face facing this all day, every day. We kind of know what's going on. Um, I, I'm, I'm concerned that we're going to run out of gear. Um, and what that means is more people unemployed, more people signing on, less money going back into the economy. Um, Cy James has made a good point. The fencing, he thinks, could have been down to the storm earlier in the year. Uh, it certainly could have been that. It also could be to, um, you know, Joe Bloggs at home deciding to do a bit of fencing because he's bored and he's getting fed up with her indoors. Um, <laughs> interesting. Mark, sorry, McNairn, um, lovely Scottish name. He's up in Scotland, was a week wait to get paint from Crown. And he said it was basic stuff. Paint, fence panels, timber, soft sand, plaster. Uh, we're running out here. Um, mm -hmm. 
Fence, uh, sorry, Nikolai Ristoff. Hope I pronounced your name right, mate. Fence and decking stain shortage. He needs some um, to be able to do some work. What do we do? Kate and Ella, you're, P, you're split in the PM role. Would you, Who would you speak to to get on board? Would you sort of look at um, trade bodies? Or would you look at individual tradespeople to say, right, we need expert opinion, not a suit that's dunking biscuits in tea in an office? Where would you start? Because, listen, the five ground of us down. could sort this out overnight. Yeah. Absolutely ground out. Gr ground up. Yeah. Um, you've got to know what... what trades people need to then be able to work out what needs to happen at the top so yeah ground up 100 percent. well the news so is getting any, worse any work, um, isn't it? yeah news is getting worse charlie data his family owns a timber merchant we're having to wait until september for a new full arctic orders from sawmills we're making phone calls every day to try and get stock import and homegrown is a nightmare look without timber i mean that's uh, that's the icing on the cake isn't it uh, we know we can't pitch roofs, lay floor. We can't do, you know, stud walls, anything. Um, you know, I thought this would be a quite light-hearted discussion that we're struggling with a few things, like finishing a bit of soft sand. Uh, we're getting messages, as you can see, coming thick and fast from the whole country. Um, Sean Milligan, he's got the worst thing. Um, he said that the ice cream ice cream van is missing. As Greg <laughs> viewers know, um, okay. at ten to one. <laughs> Um, my ice cream van goes past, but I'm on another job, so I'm um, stuck somewhere in London. Um, no ice cream van. Sorry, Sean. Um, I think um, let's try and put a positive spin on this. Um, I look back to the last recession, and um, it's it's what I call it. It did shake out a lot of the crap from the industry, the triers, the, the people that will go in, undercut us a lot and try and go in, bodge your job, get paid and move on. So I, I believe it will leave the good people, um, such as um, you guys and a lot of the viewers um, it, as well. But is it going to get to the stage where tradespeople are going to go, I can't get materials, I need money coming in for roof over my head and family. And are people going to have to go and start doing other things, such as stacking shelves in Tesco's? Probably, yeah. 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 If this carries on, then, yeah, it's people's livelihoods that... Um, that are being destroyed at the moment and uh, it, it definitely needs addressing that's probably why you're getting so many comments because it's close to everyone's heart even the current climate yeah. you can't just walk into another job anymore there's no there's, there's not a lot of jobs about anymore there's that many people lost jobs you've got like cabin crew looking for jobs in tesco's and things like that i saw on the news the other night the um i think it was little like 500 applicants for one job and you stopped taking applications after that it's just so, so many people have lost their jobs. There's no yeah. to go around anymore. Also, well, I'm trying to keep up with everyone getting in touch because I think out of all the, uh, what's this, a ninth or tenth show, this by far is the most uh, interesting one in terms of numbers and comments because we're all getting affected by it. Uh, Gaz Crossland has made an interesting point. If we think we're having issues now, wait until we officially leave the EU in December. Goes back. Are we going to be working at Christmas? I mean, this could be getting worse. Uh, Charlie Data, a lot of timbers coming in from Sweden, like carcassing. Sweden mills are now shutting for a month for their annual shutdown. And it is true. A lot of stuff does come from Scandinavia timber-wise. So that's going to add to it. Um, mm -hmm. Kate and Ella, um, it's such a difficult situation. I'm now seeing from all these comments in this, what, 25-minute chat, there's a lot of materials running out. Um, going back to what we can do, do we need to speak to not just suppliers, but do you think trade bodies, do they have more responsibility rather than taking our member, money as members and then just, you know, not really doing a great deal? Do you, do you, do you agree with that? Yeah, I think, I, to be honest, I think communication on all levels needs to be better. Um, and uh, and tradespeople need to be listened to, whether that's by trades bodies, merchants or suppliers, you know, it, it just better communication so that we know as well, because it would have been really handy had we actually known that the delivery was definitely coming in rather than going Secret squirrel. and waiting no, in the car yeah. park two yeah. hours before it opens. You know, it, it, there's, there could be better communication on all levels at the moment. Well, interestingly, you look at some of the trade bodies, they work closely with government. Now, I was a member of a trade body for a decade and um, sat on the board and stuff there. And they work very closely with government, advising, um, obviously helping with apprenticeships, which is another topic for another day. Um, but 
if they're working that closely with government, surely they should have be leaning on them and making a massive stand that we need materials now or you're going to end up with hundreds of thousands of trades out of work. So as the little question says on the, bot on the bottom, Steve and Alex, would you put it down to trade bodies that represent the construction industry and work with government to do more? Well, I should, that's pretty much the job, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You're representing people and represent them. Look after them. Well, the, I'm sure most people have heard uh, Nath Arnold's one of the, uh, and Gav Scott, uh, Travis Perkins shutting 150 stores, 5,000 staff being cut. Um, and then just to put it on the flip side, Gaz Crossland, his neighbor's uncle's lost his job as a pilot at Jet 2. Um, and he's been employed as a painter. So more people heading into construction because they're losing their jobs, as you mentioned, uh, guys, about obviously the applicants for Lidl. Um, are we going to now have a lot of, you know, I'm not, I'm going to say it, bodgers and cowboys coming in trying to earn a few quid, which means that they're going to undercut us, which makes it even harder. Okay, That's Ella, would you go along with that? I don't, that's not something we've really heard. No. Yeah, it's people coming into the industry. Um, I mean, of course, we hope that everyone will be trained up properly and stuff. Well, but, yeah, again, I mean, you, you yeah. know my view on being licensed and proper tradespeople being qualified or experienced rather than just falling out of a factory saying I'm a decorator with their brand new shiny whites, but I've better hold back on that. <laughs> um, Steve and Alex, um, do you agree? Do you think 500 applicants for one job at Lidl, there's suddenly going to be a few more people saying they're painters and decorators and other trades, aren't they? Oh, yeah. 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 We, uh, one of the sites we were on a few weeks back, we had to knock two houses down in chamber height because the brickwork was that bad. And this clown had been on a few different sites and he just left a trail of destruction behind him. And here's a good quote for you. The site agent said to us, a crap bricklayer is better than no bricklayer at the moment. That was the site agent. So basically, um, the, the, the man or woman in charge, probably in a very snappy suit and shiny shoes, and hit their comment was, say that again, because I find that staggering. A crap bricklayer is better than no bricklayer at the moment. Well, listen, that goes back to what we're saying. We need to be spoken to, don't we? We need straight people on the ground being spoken to that have got experience and are facing this head on because the way we're going, um, things are not looking good. I think we've only got a few minutes left. Uh, just a couple more comments. Um, Joe Hill, crikey, straight hot off the press. He's gone from the events industry into building. Joe, could you let us know what trade you're um, attempting? Um, because in my eyes, there's nothing like experience. It took me years to learn all of this, but thanks for being honest. Um, Ian Sproke, this is happening now, priced a few jobs this week, and he's been undercut by half the price of his going rate. Um, God, I want to finish this show on a lively note. Um, <laughs> but it's raining. Here's the bloke that's gone past in the canoe, so um, at least it's good for the Happy Olympics. Happy for him. <laughs> yeah. um, Right, Rich Leeson, our suppliers in Hull are taking the man off the street, one of the customers. Some are coming in from Leeds instead, looking after their customers who have been loyal to them. He's been using them for over 10 years, so over a decade, spent thousands a month, treated like crap, now have a new supplier who don't make idle promises. This goes back to the merchants, doesn't it? Um, Kate and Ella, I presume you get your gear from the same or one or two merchants all the time. You're loyal. How are you being treated by them? It's not bad actually. I yeah. think uh, one of them's taken our number, um, and they've been, like they've taken a handful of their regulars, and they they call us as soon as anything comes in or they've got stock, which is great. Um, yeah, the other one obviously the same. We did we had no idea. We only found out through the great one they were getting a delivery. Yeah. So there's only so much they can do, though, isn't there? If they don't have the product, they don't have the product. And just letting us know when it comes in is, is what we need them to be doing. Really. Whereas if, all we get told is, oh, we have no idea when it's coming in. Yeah, that's not and that's not helpful, well, do you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I may be getting 10 bags of finish um, next week. Um, so if anyone needs them, um, I will show you the invoice. I'm not making money. I just want to help people out because... 
um, I overordered on a job. Well, funny enough, customer changed their mind. There we go. <laughs> many of us, does it? Um, I think we're sadly running out of time. I'd like to finish on a positive, um, which is pretty hard with what's going on in our lovely industry. Um, gives us a chance. We're not at work to maybe do a bit at home, get our things in order, such as insurance, give the van a clean. Kate and Ella, what have you been up to on lockdown? And now if there's a material shortage, are you uh, building websites or cleaning the van, checking your insurance? Or are you running around with the kids? <laughs> running around with the kids it's yeah. the children yeah, it's been, it's been really though, nice isn't it let's be fair you're getting a lot more time with little ones that we probably won't get yeah. back yeah. we're not going to get this again yeah. and steve and yeah. alex what positives have you had from this a bit more time at home with the little one <laughs> we moved into a new build in december so we've been doing fencing for us and everybody else around so just loads of fencing brilliant uh, well i love carry on talking about this i'm pleased kate and ella that you've got some finish um lovely to see you both again and steve and alex I'm, fingers crossed you get a bit of soft and other bits and pieces up your way um my name's andy this has been talking praise live that quite honestly could have gone on for another few hours we were discussing <laughs> the shortage in materials what is running out by the looks of things lucky if we're all working at christmas mm -hmm. see you